In this video, we are going to show you how to diagnose and fix a V913 helicopter. This particular helicopter is experiencing really bad vibration in the shaft right here. So what we're going to do is go ahead and turn the helicopter on. Turn our receiver on. And we'll see the vibration that I'm talking about here. Pretty bad vibration, something you're not going to want to fly with. In order to do this, you're going to take, get your helicopter right here. We got one set screw right above the swash plate right here. You can go ahead and remove that one screw. Set it to the side so you don't lose it. You're going to want to pull your linkage off right here on both sides. Thumbnail works really well if you have it. And this left is going to shine right up just like so. Set this apart. So what you're left with is this here. This is going to be your main blade assembly and your balance bar. Once you have it off, go ahead and take the top cap off right here. Set your hardware to the side again. Linkage bars for the balance bar plate right here. Go ahead and pop those off of there. I already got the other one off. Again, take you a small screwdriver. There's a pin right here that holds that balance bar on. Go ahead and push it out from one side. Just make sure the screwdriver you use is smaller than the hole so you don't bore it out. Pop it through like so. A pair of pliers. Go to just remove it right out of there. Just be careful not to bend, bend the balance bar. And then set your, port, set your hardware to the side. Your main squeeze plate, you're going to have four screws. One, two, three, and four. Go ahead and take those out or just loosen them up enough so that you can get that out of there. I've already got these started to save time. And the two main blades right here, you're going to have the same screws, but you're going to be locking nuts on the bottom. So a small pair of pliers. Hold on to that right there while you get the screw loose. Remember, set your hardware to the side. Okay. Once everything's loose, go ahead and remove your blades just to get them out of the way. Top plate's going to come off like so. Set it to the side. And this is what you're looking at now. Again, you're going to have another pin that squeezes in there to hold this together. Same way as before, take you a small screwdriver, so it has a little bit of force, pushes it right out the top, small pair of pliers, squeeze onto it and get it right out of there. Now that's out. And come through just like so, bottom part of your main squeeze plate. What you're getting after is this shaft right here. Now when you go to get the new shaft, the new one's going to look just like this. It does not have the copper sleeve in there. So when you go to replace it, take that copper sleeve out. Same as we did with the pins, get you a small screwdriver, push it out of there, pop it in the new one. Sometimes a little bit of force will help. If you've got a work table like so, use that to push down in there so you don't squeeze or bend the plastic too hard. Um, went ahead and did that for the new one, save some time. To reinstall, the same way you took it apart. Start with the bottom part of your squeeze plate, go ahead and set it back on there. Middle part of your squeeze plate, go ahead and set it back on there also. It doesn't have to be perfectly lined up right now. Mainly you just want to go and you want to put this pin back in there. Just like we took it out of there, go ahead and get it started. Line it up where the copper sleeve is at. Sometimes you can do it with your finger to get it started in there. A little tricky. Like I said, if you've got a work table, works really well, save your fingers, let it do the force for you. Get that in there. A little bit of push, go ahead and get it started. If you're going to use pliers, be very careful not to mess up or damage the plastic that's in there or bend it in any way. I know a lot of you guys are probably screaming at me right now going, what are you doing? But just what's got to be done sometimes, the easiest way to do it. If you work it in there, finesse a little bit, get it where it goes. Everything is nice and locked tight again.
Bend freely, no bind up. I like that. That's what you want. Go ahead and take the top part of your squeeze plate right here. Set it back on there like so. Get these out of the way. Alright. And go ahead and put the blades back on now. It's kind of a pain, everything wants to slide around, but once you get it in there, it'll stay. You can get one side in there. Go ahead and put your screw back in there with your nut on the bottom, kind of hand tighten just to keep it in place for now. And we'll come back to it in a second. And repeat the process with the other side. Just like so. Put our screw back in there like this. Alright. Now, go ahead and retighten down all the screws in your main squeeze plate here. That way it's done and out of the way. And the same. If you got your pliers or whatever, go ahead and hold on to the locking nut on the bottom. Tighten it down good and tight. But not too tight because you do want your blades to spin freely when you're done. If they're binding up in any way, loosen it, back it off just a little bit. But this is what you should be after right here. No resistance, no binding, no hangups. Repeat the process for the other side. That's getting tight. Spins freely, no problems. Go ahead, take the balance bar. Set it back on there and get your pin. And sometimes if you do start a little, put it in there, go ahead and get it started. It helps it out a little bit. Set it in there and just line it up with your hole. And again, you get to use your pliers if you want to. I know you guys are yelling at me about this, but if you're cautious with what you're doing, you can get it done with a pair of pliers very easily. Um, if you do use a screwdriver to go through, be careful because you can inadvertently push it back to the side and then you got to redo the same thing again twice. So just a little bit of pressure with the pliers on there, and that's what we want right there. Nice and flush, free moving, no bind up, no hang ups. Go ahead, take your top cap back on there, set it in, go ahead and screw it back down. Okay. And the linkage that we took off earlier here, we'll go ahead and pop it right back on. And remember not to bend these little ends right here. If you bend these, go ahead and replace this. That way you make sure that it stays locked on there and doesn't come off while you're flying. Um, I had issues like that with other guys in the past. It does come dislodged sometimes and it can cause an issue. A little bit of pressure, just pops right back on like so. And repeat it for the other side. Okay. Once you have the set screw back in, Go ahead and put it back on the shaft. Try to get it lined up as good as you can. Go ahead and tighten down your set screw. Go ahead and get this one finished. And just reattach your linkage that you took off earlier. Now, if everything's done correctly, we should be able to turn it back on. Now, if everything's done correctly, you should be able to fly your heli without any problems.